Jesus, we lift high your name in this place today. For all that you've done for us, all that you're doing right now in our hearts and in this moment presently. And God, all that you're gonna do in the future, all that's to come, we just say highest praise. There's no other way to put it today, but just hallelujah. And constantly there's praise around your throne in heaven, but here below, we chime in and we say hallelujah, hallelujah. So God, would you be glorified today in this place, God, you are here. Scripture says where two or three are gathered, you're right there with them. And we feel your presence in this place today. So God, would you speak? Would you do a work in our hearts? And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, church. Be glad to be in the house of God today. Yeah. And you guys go ahead and take a seat. We're gonna jump right into this thing. What an awesome start to our service already, just giving God praise for who he is and what he's done and what he's doing. And what an awesome week last week, right? Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, celebrating the risen Savior. You know, the, the, we call it our Super Bowl. That's sort of like what we call it in, in church world. That is our day. That is when we celebrate Jesus. He came to die on a cross, but he didn't stay on the cross. He went into the grave, and then three days later, he walked out. It's the greatest single moment in history, and he changed the world, and that's what we celebrated last week. But even, even the most greatest moment in all of history begs the question, what now? What now? And when Pastor Richie and I were talking about the preaching schedule and who was going to speak this week, and it, it came to me, I, I started asking the Lord, I'm like, well, how do we bridge the gap between everything that happened Easter weekend, everything that we celebrated last week, and then as we look to the future, where we're going as a church and as a body, how do we bridge that gap? We've got some big things coming next week, some big announcements coming, some big news coming next week. So here I am kind of in the middle. How do we bridge the gap between Easter and, and what's to come? And, you know, I, I, I felt the Lord leading me. Well, let's just look what happened after the resurrection, what happened after Jesus came out of the tomb, what transpired in those moments. And I was read to just read everything that transpired in that, and I landed on today's scripture, and I'm super, super excited about what God showed me in his word and what he has for us today. So after, after Jesus' resurrection, after he came out of the grave, after he conquered sin, death, and hell, and, and the grave on our behalf, after he came out, he was around for 40 more days here on earth. He was not around very long after he resurrected, and our story that we're looking at today takes place during that 40-day period of time, and we're going to be focused on the disciples. The disciples are in limbo. They're waiting to find out what's next, and that's where we find our disciples today. So if you've got your Bible with you today, or if you've got your Bible app, you can pull that out, and we're going to be in John chapter 21, and we've got a little bit of a chunk of scripture here to look at, so y'all bear with me. I'm going to try to get through this so we can kind of set the stage for what we're going to look at today, and then we'll start to, to tear it apart. But if you don't have your Bible or anything to follow along with, it'll be on the screens as it always is. And so let's look at this. Let's, let's read through this. Bear with me. We're just going to have a little bit of story time. Is that okay? This morning, we're going to, we're going to read this story together. And so and uh, we've got one that's excited over here. So um, John 21, we're going to start in verse 1. It says this. It says, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And it happened this way. Simon Peter 
Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, who wrote this, he said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish for they were not far from the shore, about 100 yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals where the, with burning coals and there were fish on it and some bread. So today I want to speak on what now? What now? Father, would you give me the words to say today? Would you, would you speak and, and not me? God, you've, you've shown me this in scripture. God, would your words come forward now for your people? God, would we open our hearts? Would we open our minds? Would we tune our ears in to listen, to hear from you? God, I submit this to you. I surrender this to you. God, would you speak this morning? In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Well, have you ever had a moment in life where things didn't play out quite the way you thought they would play out? I think we all probably have that in common. Moments in our life where things just didn't happen the way we thought they were gonna happen. Maybe, maybe it's a job that you, you applied to, that you interviewed for, you, you went in, you did the process, you signed the paperwork, and you show up on day one and it, it goes okay and you're like, well maybe day two will be better, maybe it'll get better and maybe day two comes along and day three comes along and you're like, man, this is not what I signed up for. I was hoping for a better job, but, but man, maybe, maybe I just wanna go back to my old job. This isn't quite what I thought it was gonna be. We all have these moments in life where things just don't play out quite the way we think they're gonna play out. Maybe, maybe it's a relationship. Hopefully it's not your marriage. Hopefully you didn't get married and you go to the honeymoon, you wake up the next morning, you're like, oh my Lord, what did I get into? Or you get back home from the honeymoon, right? And then you learn, this person doesn't know what a clothes hamper is, you know? The, the bathroom floor is not the place to keep your towels and your dirty clothes and everything else. No, that's what the clothes hamper's for, you know? And so we all have times in our life where things just don't play out the way we think it's gonna play out. Maybe you order something on Amazon. Have you ever had this happen? You order something on Amazon and then you get it and it's the cheapest piece of garbage and, and, and you're like, man, why is, this, why is this a thing? Why are you selling this? And you have to ship it back because it's just not what you thought it was gonna be. We all have these times in our life and the disciples are in this time of limbo. They're in this time of limbo. They, they dropped everything they were doing. Jesus called them, said, hey, come follow me. They followed him for three years. They followed him for three years and, and they thought they knew what the plan was. They thought they knew what Jesus was trying to accomplish. They thought they knew what he was doing. See, they thought Jesus had come as an as a earthly Messiah to set Israel free from Roman rule. They thought he was gonna overthrow the government and bring freedom to their nation. And they, they, they thought that they had signed up for one thing, but in fact, another thing was taking place. There was a, there was a higher thing happening. And, and then they follow him for three years and then Jesus is arrested. He is falsely tried. He is, he is whipped, he's beaten, and then he's nailed to a cross and he's dead. And the disciples are like, what in the world? What in the world? And then three days later, Jesus rises from the dead, right? That's what we celebrated last week. He, he raises from the dead and he appears to the disciples one time. He appears to them two times. He appears to other people, but still the disciples are in limbo and they're asking themselves, what now? What now? What do, what do we do now? 
See, Jesus had come with a a higher purpose than what the disciples had thought on the surface he was coming to do. He came with a higher purpose. He came with more in mind. And he had invited the disciples to be a part of it. And for the last three years, Jesus had poured into them. He had poured into them. He had had poured his heart and his soul into them to try to get them to see what it it is that he was trying to do. But see, the disciples now on the other side of the resurrection, they've forgotten their purpose. They've forgotten the purpose that Jesus had called them to. And as I was reading this story, as I was reading this story that I've read so many times, it it made me think of a similar instance in Scripture where a similar thing happens. And so I started kind of digging into it, and and man, God just started to open my eyes to to what he had to say in this. And so we're going to read another story. Is that okay? We're going to have story time again. We're going to read another story. Um, This one's in Luke chapter 5. And this is another story where Jesus is interacting with the disciples and they're fishing. They're doing what they do. He's interacting with them and they're fishing. And let's, let's do this. The words will be on the screen. If you want to follow along, we're in Luke chapter 5. We're going to start reading in verse 2. It says, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught a thing, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. So Simon Peter saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. From now on, you will fish for people. From now on. Jesus didn't say, hey, for the next three years, you're going to fish for people. He said from now on. There was no end to his calling. There was no end to his purpose. From now on. I'm calling you out for a purpose. I'm putting a calling on your life I'm giving you a mission, and from now on, this is gonna be who you are. This is gonna be what you do. Not just when life is easy, not just when the, the, the seas of life are calm. No, not when your bank account's full, or no, not when you feel like it. From now on, no matter what comes, no matter what happens, from now on, you will fish for people, and look at what they did. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. From now on, you'll fish for people. And so they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. So here at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus gives Peter and the rest of the disciples, but, but Peter's the leader. I don't know if you kind of pick up on that in these, these passages. He's the leader of these guys. He's, he's the one that's always taking action. Sometimes he's taking action and he shouldn't be taking action. He's kind of stepping out there, saying things, doing things he shouldn't be doing, but Peter's leading. He's leading by example, and so he, he's the one that Jesus focuses in on here, and we're going to be focuses in on, on Peter. So Jesus gives Peter his purpose And he looks at him and he says, you're gonna leave this life behind. You're gonna leave this messy, smelly, dirty business of fishing for fish in a lake 
and you're gonna come follow me and I'm gonna make you a fisher of men. I'm gonna put a, a higher calling on your life. I'm gonna give you a, a purpose worth going after. And so flash forward three years later in this journey, this, this, this purpose that, that Jesus had put on Peter's life didn't play out the way he thought it was gonna play out. It didn't end the way he thought it was gonna end. And we find Peter and the rest of the disciples, but we find Peter and the rest of the disciples, they abandoned the purpose that Jesus had put on their life. Peter forgot his purpose. He forgot his purpose. And when you forget your purpose, church, this is what I want us to see. When you forget your purpose, a couple things happen. A couple things happen, and they're right here in this passage. And so go back to John 21, verses, verses two and three. Back in John 21, we're fast forwarding all the way to the end. We just read the beginning of where the disciples are called. Now we're gonna look at the end back here in John 21. It says, Simon Peter, again, he's the first one listed. He's the leader. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and the two other disciples were together. And Peter says, I'm going out to fish. And then the rest of them, I can picture, sort of look at each other and they're like, all right, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. And the first thing that happens when you forget your purpose is when you forget your purpose, you return to the familiar. When you forget your purpose, you return to the familiar the familiar, you return to that thing or those things that you know the most, those things that are most comfortable, those things that you are most in your element, those things that feel good. And see, Peter finding himself in a situation where he seemingly lacked purpose, where life didn't play out the way he thought it was gonna play out, where the mission wasn't exactly what he thought it was. He, he knew Jesus had called them to, to follow him, but it didn't play out the way he thought it was gonna play out. And when things got uncomfortable, Peter and the rest of the disciples returned to the very thing that Jesus had called them to leave. Look back, look back. Can we, put, can we put Luke 5 back on the screen? I know that's not necessarily in your order and I'm sorry about that, but can we put Luke 5 back up on the screen? And so when, 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 when Jesus called the disciples, go all the way to the end, all the way to the end, all the way to the end of that passage. Yeah, here we go. It says, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid, from now on you will fish for people. And so look what it says. And if you got a highlighter, if you got a pen, you highlight this. So they pulled their boats up on shore and and they left everything. Everything includes the boats. <laughs> everything includes the boats. They, they pulled their boats up on shore, they flipped them over, and then they left and they followed him. And then when life got difficult, where did the disciples go back to? They went back to the boat that they left three years earlier. I asked, I texted some guys last night and I said, man, can I get a boat this morning? You know, because I really wanted to have a boat up here that I, could, that I could flip over as an example. And then one boat we found, we couldn't get here. It was too big to fit through the loading dock door. And then the other boats, the other boats we could find, they were too dirty and it was too short a notice. And so I guess it wasn't to be. But, but what happened is Jesus called the disciples and they, they I, I can picture this in the mind, they, they flip the boat over and they say, we're gonna follow you, we're going with you. I don't know exactly what you have in mind, I don't know exactly what you're gonna do. I really don't even completely know who you are, but man, there's something in you, Jesus, that I want. There's something in you that I wanna be a part of. And so they dropped everything and they followed him, but then the road got rocky, things got uncomfortable, and when things got uncomfortable, they said, man, there was this thing we used Used to do that was easy. There was this thing that we used to do that we felt good doing. And so I don't know what else to do right now. I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to go back to that thing that I know best. And they forgot their purpose and they returned to what was familiar. See, we're creatures of comfort, right? We like those things that make us feel good, that make us comfortable. And there's something comfortable about the familiar, Right, like we go on vacation and we're gone for a long time, we come back home, there's something comforting about being in your home because it's familiar. But see, Jesus, he didn't call us to be 
comfortable. He called us to follow him. He told us to pick up our crosses and, and follow him. And crosses aren't comfortable. Crosses aren't comfortable. He didn't call us to be comfortable. He called us to follow him. But when we forget our purpose, we return to that which is familiar. And sometimes the familiar is fatal. The familiar, as good as it feels, is fatal. It'll kill your faith. It'll kill your faith. It'll kill your future. Because God had a higher calling for these men. He had a higher calling for them. He had a greater purpose for them. But they left all that and they returned back to that which they knew. And that, those boats can look different for each of us. Maybe your boat looks like fear. Maybe your boat looks like an addiction. Maybe your boat looks like religion. That's hard to hear sitting in church, right? Sometimes that boat is it, 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 religion. It, it feels good just to come and to do your thing each week and to, to say your prayers every night, but there's no relationship there. It's just strictly religion. And it's easy. I've been doing it my whole life. I was, I was raised in it. I was taught the prayers to pray. I was taught the verses. I was taught you're in church Sunday morning. Some of us Sunday night, some of us Wednesday night. If you're Baptist, you remember those days? We're in church every time. It's open, but it's just strictly religion. It's not a relationship, and it's easy, and it's easy. And when life gets difficult, I turn to those things that I know the most, and I forget my purpose, and when we do that, we return to the familiar. So what, what is your boat this morning? What is your boat? Again, it can look like many different things. But we all have those things in our life that are so familiar and they're so easy. And when life gets difficult, we, we turn to them. Maybe it's, maybe it's a relationship with a certain person that's just toxic Maybe it's a bottle. Maybe it's a website. I don't know what it is for you, but we all have it. I have them. I have those boats that when, when God called me, when Jesus called me to follow him, I flipped them over. I said, I surrender all. I'm following you. But when life gets difficult, it's so easy to go back to those boats and flip them back over again and settle back into the thing that which God called you out of, when you forget your purpose, you return to the familiar. That's the first thing. The second thing that happens when you forget your purpose is when you forget your purpose, you forfeit success. Look at verse three again there in John 21. Peter said, I'm going out to fish. The other guy said, we'll go with you. And so they went out and they got in the boat. But that night they caught Nothing, nothing. See, this wasn't God's purpose for Peter anymore. This wasn't the calling on his life. He had called him out of it and he said, hey, you, you're gonna leave this mess behind and you're gonna follow me and I'm gonna make you a fisher of men got a higher calling on your life. There's potential in you that I see that we can tap into and we can do something great, but you gotta leave this behind. And when you forget your purpose, you forfeit success. See, Peter and the rest of the disciples, they weren't having success doing those things that God had called them out of. And I'm not here to tell you that you won't see success in life, that you won't see success. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're, man, you're like, I've got a great job. I make good money. I, I'm, I'm very successful. I've got a beautiful family. I've got a nice house. I live in a gated community. I'm successful. But you're successful in the world's eyes. Are you successful at that which God has called you to from a kingdom perspective? See, God's got a higher calling on your life. And if we're returning to those things that are familiar, if we're forgetting our purpose, it doesn't, those, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are 
in life. We put it this way. It doesn't matter what you're doing in life, what your job is, what your family is like. It doesn't matter what you're doing in life. We need to be at the work of Jesus. We need to be spreading the gospel of Jesus. That's our purpose. That's what we're to be doing. You can, you can have a job, you can have the family, you can have the nice car, you can have those things. Jesus isn't saying you can't have those things. But if the priority is not him and his calling on your life and his purpose on your life, if you forget that which he's called you out of and called you into, then you're gonna lack true success. The success we're talking about is your kingdom success. So when you forget your purpose, you return to the familiar. When you forget your purpose, you forfeit success. And then the next thing is in the next verse. In John 21, verse four, it says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. When you forget your purpose, you forget your Savior. When you forget your purpose, you forget your Savior. See, we tend to remember the, the faces of those that we see a lot, right? We, we know the face of our husband or our wife. You know, we know the faces of our children and those that are close to us. You know, we remember the, the faces and the names of our friends. Some of us might even remember phone numbers, you know, like just, who remembers phone numbers anymore, right? But those that are really close to you, you probably know their phone number. I can tell you two phone numbers right now. It's the only two phone numbers I have memorized. It's Christina's and my dad's. And just because, uh, you know, one's my wife and then one has had his phone number for forever. And so I just remember it from when I was a kid. And, you know, we remember those things that, are close to us. Remember those people that we're closest with. See, Christina's on Facebook, <laughs> and I'm not. So if, if you don't know that about me, I've probably talked about this before. I'm not on Facebook. I never have been on Facebook. It's been my life goal to not be on Facebook. And so now, yeah, so, so now it's, it's, it's just, uh, I'm setting my ways, you know? And so I'm just, I'm not gonna do it. It's my life goal is to not be on it. And a lot of people tell me, man, you need to be on this. If you're gonna connect with people, if you're gonna get to know people, if you're gonna minister to people, you gotta be on Facebook. And I'm like, I'm good. My life's crazy enough as it is. My life's depressing enough as it is at times. I don't think I need this thing speaking negativity into me 24 seven, living on my phone. It's act, I can access it whenever, I don't need it. But Christina's on it, she's a sinner, you know. No, nah, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, I love you. You know, so she's, she's on Facebook and, you know, she'll ask me sometimes, she'll say, hey, do you, do you remember so-and-so? You know, and I'm like, no. You know, and she, she remembers them because she interacts with them all the time. She talks to them online, she keeps up with how many kids they have and where they're living currently. And this, these are people that maybe we were previously like at another church or previously lived in another town or we worked other jobs with and I just seem to forget them. And I know that's a bad thing and if you're watching this video later, I'm super sorry if you're one of those people, but she remembers them because she interacts with them on a, on a daily basis but I, I don't, and so I forget them. I forget them, and see, we, we tend to forget those people that we don't interact with a ton. And see, maybe today you've forgotten what Jesus looks like because you've stopped interacting with him. Maybe you've stopped interacting with him, and you've forgotten what he looks like. We have to make sure we're constantly investing in our relationship with Jesus. Just like we, we pour into and we invest in relationships with other people, we need to invest in our relationship with him. And here are the disciples. They're out on the water. They've returned to that thing which was familiar. They're not having much success. They've forgotten their purpose. And now, worst of all, they've forgotten what Jesus looks like. They forgot what Jesus looked like. They walked with them. They talked with them. They, they hung out with them for three years and now they've forgotten what he looks like. And if we keep reading in John 21 and pick it up in verse six, it says this. And Jesus is on the, on the shore. Actually, let's back up. Let's read verse five really fast. He, Jesus calls out to him. He says, he says friends, 
Haven't you any fish? Friends, how's it going? And they said, no. And in verse six it says, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul in the net <laughs> because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, Peter wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off. Peter jumped in the water. Peter wasn't even waiting until the boat got back on shore. I ain't got time for that. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And here's, here's the beautiful thing about this story. Here's the beautiful thing about this story. The story's familiar, right? It's, it's what happened at the beginning. When Jesus called the disciples, it's the same events that happened when he called them. Jesus showed up. He showed up. And as soon as Jesus here in John chapter 21, as soon as Jesus says, hey, how's it going out there? You having any luck? And they said, no. And he said, hey, why don't you try tossing it on the right side of the boat? I think I see some, see some action right there. And so they did. And as soon as the fish hit the net, they remembered. They remembered. They remembered when Jesus showed up at the beginning. They remember when Jesus showed up on the same shore. He showed up on the same shore. They remember when Jesus got in the boat with them. They remember when Jesus climbed in. They remember when Jesus said, hey, why don't you push out? Why don't you push out a little bit further? Why don't you just go out a little bit more? They remember when Jesus said, why don't you toss your net on the right side of the boat? And they did it. And then such a great multitude of fish filled the net. So many fish in the net that they almost broke. And right when the fish filled the net here in John chapter 21, they remembered, they remembered their purpose. They remembered their calling and their eyes were open. And they said, Jesus, it's Jesus. They remembered their calling. They had forgotten their purpose, but now they remembered their purpose. Have you forgotten your purpose today? Have you forgotten your purpose? Have you become so preoccupied with life and the, the nine to five and the, the grind? And have you gotten so distracted by all those things that are around us? Have you forgotten your purpose? And if you have today, if that's you today, and if we were to be honest with ourselves, probably every one of us could say that. Just like Jesus showed up on that shore that morning, he's in the room today. He's in the room, just like he showed up on that shore after the disciples had forgotten their calling, after they abandoned that which Jesus had called them into, and they returned to that which was familiar, and they're suffering from a lack of success. They've forgotten who he was. He still showed up. He showed up. And Jesus is here today, and he's saying, hey, why don't you try it my way? Why don't you try tossing the net on the, the right side of the boat? You remember? You remember your purpose? Do you remember your calling? So the disciples, they make their way back up on shore. And I, I love this. <laughs> I've, I've sort of become a, a nerd of scripture a little bit and I was, I was talking to my dad on the phone yesterday and I just, I was going on and on. I was like, man, it's just amazing 
like what God will show you if you dive into his word and you ask him to reveal something to you. And I just, I just love this. This is just a little tidbit. When, when the disciples come back up on shore, Jesus is waiting for them. And he's ready for them. You know, even when we walk away from Jesus, he's waiting on the shore when we return. And, and he wasn't waiting there to discipline the disciples. No, he was, he was waiting there to dine with them. He was waiting not to discipline them, but to dine with them. He had breakfast cooking. You ever woke up in the morning and there's breakfast cooking downstairs? There's bacon on the, on the skillet. There's eggs, there's waffles, there's biscuits and gravy for you true Southerners. Nothing beats a good breakfast, right? And I, I don't think that's what they had here, but for the sake of us, you know, we're just gonna imagine here for a little bit. Jesus is waiting on the shore with breakfast. <laughs> he's got bacon sitting there. You know, he's ready for his disciples and he's not ready to yell at him. Be like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? No, he's saying, hey, come on over. Let's hang out a little bit. And I can just picture this. I can, whew, I can just picture this. Jesus is there on the shore and he invites them in and they come on over and they're sitting there and they're, they're having breakfast together and they're just reminiscing, just reminiscing about the good old days. And it's Jesus's goal to remind them, to remind them of where they had been, to prepare them for where they were gonna go. They had forgotten their purpose, so now he's, he's sitting there around breakfast with them, just reminiscing, reminiscing. Hey, hey, you remember when we came across that one guy that couldn't see? <laughs> remember when I, we took some mud in our hands and we put it on, on his eyes and then he could see? You remember that, that man that was on the side of the street and he had been laying there his whole life, he never walked a day in his life, and he got up and he rolled up his mat and he, and he walked away. You remember all those people that couldn't hear? They couldn't hear a thing, but then I touched their ears and they could start to hear. You remember when Lazarus, our good friend, died and they put him in the ground and then we got there three days later and then we said, hey, Lazarus, hey man, come on out. And he walked out of the grave. Do you remember when people came back to life? Do you remember? Do you remember? And Jesus is reminding them of their purpose and, 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 and in not in a disciplinary way, they're just hanging out like the good old days. Just hanging out, some guys having breakfast together. This is the first, you know, men's breakfast, you know. <laughs> we do that sometimes. And this is the first one, this is the first one. He's hanging out with his boys there around the fire, having breakfast and he's reminding them of their purpose. And I love this. I love this. Jesus turns his attention to Peter. Remember, Peter, he's the leader. He's the one that's kind of heading up this whole thing with the disciples, and they all look to him as an example. And Jesus looks at him. John 21, in verse 15, he says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, well, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said to Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And here we find Peter being reinstated and reminded of his purpose just like he did three years ago, when he said, cast the net on the other side, and then he said, hey, why don't you leave this behind to come and follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. And he's reminding him of this. And three times he asked Peter, do you love me? And three times Peter says, you know, I do. And he was calling him back, and he was calling him back. See, we all have a purpose, we all have a mission, and here at Avalon Church we say it, this way, and we're gonna put it up on the screen. I just want you, I just want you to know this, and I hope, I hope you take it to heart. I hope you have it memorized. 
And I love it. It says, bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And our mission statement here at Avalon Church is a beautiful thing. I love it. When I came here, I was like, this is one of my favorite things about this church is, man, this, 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 this statement of what we're trying to do, this mission statement, this is what we're going after, this is what we're trying to do. And it's, and it's super powerful because it is our way of saying Jesus' final instructions to the disciples whenever he ascended into heaven. In Matthew 28, we have the Great Commission. And it says this in verse 18, it says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And we sort of phrase that up by bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus. If we break it down, bringing, if, we, if we're gonna bring people, we gotta go. Jesus said, go, go. If we're gonna bring people in, we gotta go get them, right? We gotta go get them, we gotta bring them in. And so bringing people, this could, be, this could be relational, this could be a relative, this could be a spouse, this could be a child, this could be a friend, this could be just a neighbor, a coworker, it doesn't matter, bringing, People. This could be people of every demographic, black, white, Native American, Indian, African. It doesn't matter. Asian. At all people. All people. He says, go out and reach all people. Go out and reach all people. So we're bringing people, people that are different than us, people that don't look like us, people that don't think like us, people that vote different than us, bringing people. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter what they sound like. It doesn't matter their history. No, bringing people, that's what we do. Bringing people wherever they are. This could be geographical. This could be from a different county, a different country. This could be someone that's on a different emotional level. This could be somebody that's on a different spiritual level. It doesn't matter. Bringing people wherever they are. Maybe they're depressed. Maybe they're broken. Maybe they've been burned by the church. Maybe they've been hurt by someone. It doesn't matter. We bring people wherever they are. They don't have to clean themselves up first. We bring them here and Jesus does the cleaning. They don't need to do it for themselves first. No, we bring them wherever we find them. We bring them in and we bring them into a growing relationship with Jesus. We're all about making disciples. We want to see people take their next step. We want to see people grow in their faith and in their walk with Jesus. That's what we want to do. That's, that's our mission. That's our purpose, church, bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus. And the last thing, last thing today, I wanna to close with this. If you remember back when Jesus was on trial right before he was crucified, right before he was crucified and they were in the garden, right? When Jesus is arrested and when he's arrested, all the disciples sort of disperse. They all run in fear because they think that they're next. They don't know what's going on. They're going crazy. The disciples spread out and they go our separate ways. And then Peter shows up at, at Jesus's trial and he kind of sneaks in and he finds this burn barrel and he, he kind of disguises himself in the corner. I picture him in the shadows and he starts to warm his hands. And he's there when, when Jesus is on trial in John 18, and it says, it was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. And Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. And here's the fascinating thing. That word fire only shows up two times in scripture. That Greek word, word that's used for fire only shows up two times. It shows up there in John 18 when Peter is warming himself by the fire. And as you know, he denies Jesus three times. People around, they say, hey, I recognize you. You were with him. He says, no, no, nah, man, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. Three times that happens. They point their finger and they say, hey, you're one of them. 
no, 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 that's not me. That's not me. Three times that happens. And the other place in scripture that word shows up is right there in our passage this morning. When Jesus shows up on the shore and he makes a fire, he starts cooking the bacon and he's sitting there waiting on his disciples to come back in. And he's got a fire there. He invites the disciples over and he looks at Peter in the same place, in the same setting, the same word that was used in the Greek when Peter denied Jesus three times. That same word is used here when Peter has the chance to declare his devotion back to Jesus, the same word, only two times. That can't be an accident. In the same setting that Peter denied Jesus, Peter now has the opportunity to declare his devotion back to Jesus, the same opportunity to return to the purpose that Jesus gave him from the beginning. Jesus has given him a second chance. He's given him a second chance. And today, Jesus has prepared a fire here and he's speaking, he's saying, hey, come back. Do you remember? Do you remember where you were when I showed up? Do you remember where, I, where you were when I showed up in the middle of your mess, in the middle of your struggle? I, lo I love this too, back in, in Luke 5, it says Jesus got on the boat. And if we're looking at this as, <laughs> this is so good, when we're looking at this as the boat represents that thing that we return to, Jesus climbed in the boat at the beginning. He climbed into the mess. He climbed into that thing that had them chained to the world, had them chained to what the world saw as successful. Jesus climbed into it and he said, push out a little bit further. I got something better for you. He's reminded them of that today. He's reminding us today of our purpose and that which he's called us to. See, church, we got, we got some big things coming. We got some big things coming. We got a job to do. We got a work that's ahead, and you're gonna hear more about it next week, and I hope you're here. If you're watching online and you can come next week, you need to be here. If you're here today, you need to be here. If there's someone here that you know that's not here today, you need to have them here next week because we got something big coming. And everybody needs to be a part of it. Everybody needs to be a part of it. But in order to be a part of it, we gotta know what our purpose is. We gotta know what our mission is. We gotta know it. We gotta own it. We gotta believe it. We gotta walk in it. Can we just bow our heads for a moment? Can we bow our heads for a moment across the room? If you're, if you're joining us online, you do the same thing wherever you are this, this morning. Have you forgotten your purpose? Have you forgotten your purpose and that which God has called you into? Have you lost sight of Jesus? Have you left your calling? Have you left your purpose? Have you forsaken that for the familiar? I'm not asking you to raise your hand. I want you to have a moment with the Lord right now, right where you sit, right in your living room, in your car, wherever it is, if you're joining us online, if you're in the room, just have a moment with the Lord. Have you forgotten your purpose? Have you started chasing the wind? Have you started going after those things that are familiar? Jesus is saying, hey, I've got a higher purpose for you. The second thing, I wanna to talk to those of you that are here that don't know who Jesus is. Maybe you're like, hey, I don't know anything about this calling, I don't know anything about this purpose, but I, I, don't, I don't even know who Jesus is. Can I know a little bit more about him? We have people ready to talk to you about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Creator. He wants to know you. So do you know Jesus today? 
And then for all of us here today, I'm gonna ask you to stand across the room today. If you've forgotten your purpose or maybe you, you know your purpose and you're trying to walk in it, we got a lot ahead, we got a lot to do and we need everybody to be all in. We need everybody to own our mission today. So I'm gonna have you on the count of three this morning. If you're here today and you say, I wanna step in to the purpose, I wanna own this mission that we have as a church of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus, I wanna own this mission. I wanna step into my purpose on the count of three. I just want you to stand in this room together, unified. If you're watching online, if you're joining us there, stand where you are. If you're in the car, pull over and stand up. If you're here today on the count of three, one. If you're here today and you wanna step into the purpose that God has for you, two. If you're here and you've forgotten what your purpose is, three. Stand to your feet. If you wanna own the purpose that God's given us as a church, if you wanna own that today, just unified today, that we want to see great things happen in our church, in our families, in our community. We've got a lot ahead. We've got a lot ahead, church. And we need to own. We need to own this mission. We need to own this mission. Jesus, I pray today over every person that's standing in this room, everyone that's joining us online, man, we've so thankful that you've called us out and you've set us apart for a purpose and for a reason. And so whether we're walking in it currently or whether we've abandoned it and we've forgotten that which you've called us into, today we focus in on you. We return to you. We return to the purpose that you have for us. God, would you help us in the days that are ahead, the weeks that are ahead, the months that are ahead, the years that are to come? God, would you keep us fixed on you? Would you keep our eyes fixed on you? Would you turn our eyes to Jesus? Just like we sang earlier today, would you turn our eyes to Jesus and the things of the earth? Man, they get a whole lot dimmer when we fix our eyes on your greatness. And so we forsake the familiar and we want to embark out a little deeper with you. We want to embark out a little bit deeper with you today. Would you direct our paths? Would you help us to stay true to that which we are standing for today? Would you help us to stay true to it? God, give us strength, fill us with your spirit. We want to live for you. We want to see as many people as we can come to know you. God, be with us. Help us to do it. Help us to do it in the name of Jesus. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm glad to be at church today. Is everybody glad to be here today? Is everybody glad? Well. I know I'm long and I know we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. We're gonna, we're gonna shut this thing down. If you're here today and this is your first time here, take this card, it's sitting in the seat pocket in front of you. Fill that out, turn it in, take it to Next Step Central, which is now out in the lobby. It's not on the other side of the wall. I don't want you to be confused. Just go out to the lobby. There'll be people there waiting on you. Fill that card out, turn it in. If you're here today and you wanna take your next step, whether that's you wanna know who Jesus is and you wanna pray and accept him as your savior, or if you wanna get baptized, we can help you do that today. Go out here. Any, any next step that you need today, take this card to Next Step Central. We've got people there waiting to help you take those next steps. So again, like I said, next week, big, 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 I can't, I can't say it enough, big announcement coming next week about the future of our church and where we are going. I can't wait for you guys to be in on it. Everyone around on staff and there's some leadership in our church. We know what the vision is. We know where we're wanting to go and we just can't wait to tell you guys about it. And so be here next week. We got a new sermon series kicking off called Doing Our Part. We're kicking that off next week and we're got 
a big announcement. I can't say that enough. I can't tell you what it is right now, but you gotta come next week to see, to see it and to hear it, right? And so can we do that? Can we come next week, invite people? If there's people here you don't know, if you're in small group with people that you don't see here today, tell them they need to be here next week. It's not an option. They gotta be here. If you are a part of Avalon Church, you need to be here. So do that for us. Invite them to come. Man, I hope you have a great week. I know we're late getting out. I'm so sorry. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next week. You guys are dismissed. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.